Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe Rule from Raconteur Animation, back again this week with another Maya tutorial, and we're going to be talking about how to create this long string of tape, of, of stickers, in this machine, in this animation that I created for Print Trace Systems. So there are a few different concepts at work here. The first one is, the first step is to just create one of these stickers. And then we're going to use the mash tools in Maya to duplicate the, this, the sticker out and make a long string of them. And then we're going to use the curve warp function in Maya to bend that string of tape around a spline or a curve. And then the last thing we're going to do is set up a bunch of expressions to drive this tape movement along the curve and at the same time spin the pulleys at the proper speed and, and spin the spool. So I will just play this shot real quick here so you get an idea of the effect. It's moving along here, this pulley is spinning this one as well, like so. So, this is their stripped down scene. Just some, some simple curves, and I put a checker pattern on these spools so we can see what's going on when they rotate. And the first thing we want to do is to create our sticker element. So I'm just going to go up to create and do a plane. And I'm going to leave it at one centimeter squared because that makes the, the math farther down the road much, much easier. So I will rename this sticker element. And then we're going to jump right in and find my shelf here. my shelf. Do I elements shelf? Okay. And mash. Okay. Uh, click on this the sticker element and then just click on this mash button. And you'll see what it does here is just starts duplicating it along in a straight line. And if we go into the distribute settings here, we can determine the number of stickers and then the length of the tape. So uh, this curve that I created for, for the top of this system is uh, 800 centimeters long, more or less. And um, the quick tip here, to measure curves, you can go to Create, Measure Tools, and click on this Arc Length tool, and then click on a curve, and it will actually give you a, a readout of how long the curve is. Super handy. So, uh, we're going. The curve is 800 centimeters, and we're going to make this string of tape 400 centimeters long. So we'll change the, the distance and the distribute node here to 400 centimeters. And because each of these stickers are one centimeter, we can just create 400 points as well. And then it creates this perfect string of stickers. And the next thing we want to do is open up our sticker element here We need to apply uh, material to this so we can see what's going on, so it's not just a, a plain gray. So I will click on the, on the sticker element and then just right click and hold and assign a favorite material and we'll, we'll go with a blend. I'll let sticker, sorry, sticker shader. And then I actually already have a texture set up here. 
in my project file. Beautiful little painting. So this will make it easier for us to see what's going on and we can see the repetitions. So you might be wondering right now, I mentioned before that we were going to use the curve warp function and MASH actually has a, a curve tool in it. Click on our MASH node here. Um, so why don't we just use that? And I will demonstrate to you why. So we, this is the curve we want to use, this upper curve. This is the curve we want to use to actually put the, the tape. It'll go through the middle of the tape. So open up my curve node and I'm going to middle click and drag this curve in here. And then we have to turn down this distance on the distribute node to get it to work properly. And turn up the step. And you'll start to see here the problem. I'm going to turn down this clip start and not. So if we look at the way that these things are interacting, I'm actually going to turn this up to 800 so we get a more distributed. They're, they're like cards. They're not actually stuck onto a, con, a continuous string of tape like they would react in real life. So the, the animation would start to look clunky when they go around these pulleys you know, and they don't bend at all. So the way to fix that is to use in the rigging menu set here there is deform curve warp and that will allow us to bend this entire string as one object as opposed to using this curve to to direct each of the separate objects and them retaining their shape. So I'll go back to my, my curve node here and my mash network and I'm going to delete it and click on mash again. Change this back to 400 points with a distance of 400. And then we will click on our string of tape here and then click on shift click, sorry, hold down shift and click on the curve and then go to deform curve warp. And now we're starting to get something that looks a little bit better. And if I click on this and then go into my curve warp settings and we're going to start playing with the offset. And ah, now, see, it's bending as one shape, and it's starting to look, starting to look much better. So the next problem to deal with is this, is the alignment of the tape, because it needs to twist throughout the machine. You have it going around a, a pulley or a vertical pulley here. It needs to lay flat against the spool, of course. Here it needs to lay flat against this spool, and likewise. And the best way to do that is to use an aim curve. And I, I created one here. It's I'm not going to actually demonstrate how to draw this out because it's it's actually a pain and it's very time consuming and very slow. So but you'll get the idea that if I I'll go back to my curve warp settings here and I'm just going to copy this tab so that it always stays open. And then middle click and drag this aim curve. It is going to perfectly align this tape. And basically that's 
it's taking the the normals of of this object and then always pointing it towards this curve and I will I'm going to reduce the number of points on this to help speed it up, but I'll show you how that works a little bit. If I grab this aim curve and right click, open up control vertex, I start moving it around. You'll see how it twists. And it's it's a little bit glitchy, especially it's one of the things I wanted to talk about here. Um, it's a little bit glitchy, especially when you have stickers that are or tape points that are really close together. So if I start to move this up, you see they're orienting, but all of a sudden then they, they freak out. And that's because this point in the curve is farther away from the original curve than this point in the curve here. And so the in the middle of this um, in the middle of the, the string of tape, you have one point pointing towards this point of the aim curve and one point pointing towards this part of the aim curve. Hopefully that made sense. So it's it takes some tweaking definitely to get it right, and I can demonstrate here as well how it you can align these perfectly. But so basically, you would what I what I did in the original project was I duplicated the whole curve, and then I just started pulling it out and getting a a good orientation around the entire thing. Anyway, um, this this aim curve works so slow that I'm actually going to turn it off for the rest of the tutorial up until the very end. But I needed to wanted to show you how to get the this tape to curve and twist exactly where you need it to. And you actually have a quite a bit of control by using this method. So Anyway, um, I'm going to right click on the aim curve now and break the connection. And that puts it back to the its usual broken state. And then bump up the number of points again. And then instead of using the aim curve, I'm just going to click on auto normals again to get it to be at least a little bit sane. So. The next step then is, I mentioned before that I, I was going to create a, a controller that controls the, the spinning of the, of the pulleys and the movement of the tape and the, the spinning of the spool here. So what I'm going to do for that is just create a locator and we'll call this um, tape control and then Inside this tape control shape, I'm just going to select it and then I'm going to select it and then go to attributes and I'm going to add an attribute here. And this will give us something like a central number that's going to control this entire system. So the float value is good. Um, we do need to name it. We're going to call this uh, tape control again. And the minimum value is going to be zero, and the maximum value is going to be 800, because this, well, technically it can be 805, um, because that's the length of this curve. And then I'll just click Add and Close. And that creates this nice slider for us here to control the entire system. The the thing, the number that really is going to drive this whole thing is we need to figure out how to translate the offset value of this tape, the, the curve warp. I'm going to copy this again. Curve warp offset value is what makes the tape move through the machine. 
But the problem is it's a zero to one value. You can see here, it's just, this is the end, this is the beginning, zero to one. So we need to translate this into centimeters. We need to figure out how many centimeters each of these units are. And if we stop and think about it for a second here, I'm just going to isolate this upper curve and that. This, right now the offset value is at the beginning of this curve, or the, the tape is at the beginning of the curve and the offset value is at zero. And if we move it to the very end, then the beginning of the tape is at the end of this curve. Therefore, it moved 800 centimeters. The, from 0 to 1 on this offset value represents 805 centimeters. I'm just going to round to 800 to, to make it simpler. So we can actually, when we set up the expression to link this offset value with our, our tape controller, we can use that knowledge to, to translate it. Uh, I'll just write the expression and it'll make more sense in a second. So I'm going to right click on this offset value and create a new expression. And we want the, calling this curve warp, Two dot offset to equal the value of our tape control dot tape control is the attribute and simply divide that by 800 which is the length of this curve and now when we move our tape control attribute, because we divided it by 800, which is the length of the curve, for every, if I change this to 381 here, and I change it to 382, now this tape moved almost exactly one centimeter which will be important when we go to set up the expressions for these pulleys. We need to know um, this attribute needs to move one centimeter per number, or move once one centimeter at a time, I should say. The next step then is to figure out how to translate the the movement of this tape, or in the, this tape control here. Each value along here represents one centimeter, moving this tape one centimeter. And so we need to translate that movement to rotational values for all of these spools. And I already calculated the, the circumference of these spools, or no, not the circumference, the diameter. Um, just by creating a little cube. Actually, I'll, I'll do it here just so I can show you. It's not, again, very scientific, but it works. And I'll just scale it up a little bit, check the bottom, down. I'll isolate these so we can see. Scale it up. So that's pretty close. Yeah, it's close. And the value of that is 1.999. So we can deduct that the diameter of the spool is two centimeters. And so if you remember high school geometry to calculate the circumference of this spool, you multiply it by pi by 3.14. So 2 times 3.14, 3.14, 3.14, 3.14, 3.14, 3.14, 3.14, 3.14, 3.14, 3.14, 3.14, 3.14, 3.14, 3.14, 3.14, 3.14, 
6.28 is how much this tape is going to move to spin this spool 360 degrees. And to put that rotation value back to zero, we can translate that through translate calculate that through another expression. So if I click on this spool, we want to create an expression for the X rotation here. I'll just right click, create new expression, and we want the pulley one dot rotate X value to be driven by, I'm gonna add a parentheses here, the value of this, the movement of this tape, which is our tape control dot tape control. And we multiply that by 360 degrees. And then we're going to divide the whole thing by 6.28. Okay, I will, I'll try to explain what's going on here. I'm not very good at math, so well, this is confusing to me as well. But um, in order to get this, in order to get this pulley to rotate one time, we need a value of 360 degrees for this rotate x value. And that translates to well, x here, we'll say that the, the input value times 360. So if, if this pulley was one centimeter in circumference, then when we, when the, this tape moves one centimeter, the spool spins one time, moves one centimeter, it moves this, um, this pulley one rotation 360 degrees. But this spool is 6.28 times bigger than a one centimeter circumference spool. So we need it to move 6.28 times slower. That makes sense. So that's where we why we divide this figure by 6.28. At least that's how I make sense of it in my head. Um, anyway, we need the the number to be lower because it takes it takes 6.2 this number to be 6.28. This, this tape moves 6.28 centimeters before this um, value reaches 360 degrees. Anyway, hopefully that wasn't more confusing than not. And I'm actually just going to set up a quick animation here so we can test if these things are actually working. I'm click on my tape control and tape control shape. I'm going to set a keyframe, move say 40 frames and just move it. Wow, that's really off. Okay, hold on. Back it up there. about 395, there we go. Move at 30 frames, go forward, and 60, and I'll just dial it back a bit. Just so it moves forward and then back, and that's it. And I'm actually gonna stretch that out so it's, it takes longer. Graph editor. 
scale keys and stretch it out to 150 frames. There we go. That's more visible. Okay, now go here and hit play. Yay! And it spins. Yeah. And then we just need to do the same thing for this spool, and this one rotates on the Z axis here. So if I have my expression editor open here, we're going to click on the rotate Z, copy this, paste it, equals tape control dot tape control times 360, put this parentheses divided by 6.28, create, test it, it's running backwards, so we'll do this negative 360, like so, and then the last one, Rotate Z equals tape control dot tape control times three sixty oops sorry negative three sixty divided by six point two eight create Okay, now the big one. So this, I need to remember what the measurement was. Um, 22, the diameter of this, um, this spool is 22.8, so it's 71.592 in circumference multiply 22.8 by pi 3.14 come up with this number and we can use the exact same expression as before and we need it to rotate on the is it the y axis on this one yes rotate on y and in the negative direction again Rotate Y, it's inside of a, actually I'll fix that right now. I imported this file so it's got still got a namespace in it. Okay, spool.rotate Y equals tape control dot tape control times 360 divided by, I forgot the number, 71.592. Create that, Let's see if it works here. Nope, didn't follow my own advice. This would be negative 360. like so. And that is, that's pretty much it. Um, what I'll do here is I'm going to create a little play blast for you guys so you can see what it looks like if I add this aim curve back in to align the tape nice and neat. And then
create a play blast at one scale. And then I will go have a sandwich. While that's doing that, you guys can um, stick around for about a half a second. Well, this is done. And then we can take a look. Okay, I, I lied. I didn't actually have a sandwich. But I, I wish I did. That actually sounds good. But anyway, this is the here's the play blast that I created. So you can see the tape is all nicely aligned. Our pulley, pulleys are spinning. Everything looks pretty. Well, it doesn't look pretty, but it would once we get it shaded. So I hope that was helpful and you learned something about scripting or expressions or things like that or the maybe the curve warp function. Uh, do check out some of our other videos if you so please and let me know if there's any other technique that you'd like to learn about. You see an effect in one of these videos or one of these um, presentations that you're curious about, please reach out. And I will see you all again next time. Thanks for watching.